Okay, this is like probably the shortest video I'm gonna do, and it's how to thread a needle. So, um, lots of people will say, oh, Miss Poole, can I please use a needle threader? I'm telling you right now, do not use a threader, it breaks the needle. Because a needle threader is designed to go in the eye of the needle, and it sort of like loops the thread, and it kind of you know pulls the thread back through for you but the truth is when you're looking at a size 11 size 13 size 16 needle the threader itself probably won't even fit in that eye hole I'm trying to angle this so you can kind of see the eye hole against the black it's it's a very small eye hole on this size 13 needle I'm not a huge fan of these size 13s I actually prefer the 16s that have a gold eye that gold eye for some reason the gold eye ones are just easier to thread I have no idea why that would be a really cool science experiment if somebody wanted to do that and figure it out like does the gold calm down all the electrons that make the thread staticky I don't know so I'm going to really try to zoom in so that you can see the eye of this needle but it is so tricky this is the kind of thing that oh I can sort of see the eye there so we'll try and focus more. Maybe it will. And maybe it won't. So this is the kind of thing that just comes with time. You get better at it. And then when you're my age, you need like a magnifying glass, which is what I have rigged up here in order to do it, or bifocals, which I also have. So the trick, there's no real trick. So some people will tell you to lick the thread. That's very common and it does work with uh, cotton threads. And that kind of gets rid of the static because it's nylon. It's got a lot of static on it. I actually find that if you just wet the tip, so I, I, you can't see it, but I just lick my fingers. I find that if you wet the tip of the where the eye hole is, and I don't know if it's true or not, but I usually just blow on it for luck. And my theory is that somehow it like makes it easier to go through. I don't know if that's true or not. Everybody has their own thing. The big thing with threading a needle is that you're going to have to use very sharp scissors or it's going to end up being really sucky. These are little scissors that are just for cutting thread. So they're pretty sharp. So I take the needle and oh before I show you this I forgot to tell you how much thread to do. So when you're first starting out, when you get to be a more experienced beater you're going to change this up but when you first start out beading having a lot of thread on you or big long thread can get really confusing especially when you first learn double needle technique but even for single needle here's what I need you to do so this is you or you are and you've got your elbows I know this is not in proportion okay so here it's a little better so you are gonna string your you're gonna hold on to this spool and you're going to hold the spool on your chest and you're going to measure out from your chest to the very end of your arm so to the end of arm and what that is going to do is it will give you just enough to like start getting used to using it and then when you get to be a more experienced beater because you don't like having to change your thread out all the time and there'll be a separate lesson on changing thread out it's just you know this is just an easy way to learn it later on you'll have longer and longer and longer threads so having said that let's assume that I did that and I measured out like that much I didn't but let's assume I did so I chose pink in the hopes that you would be able to see it against this black kind of like so what I find, rather than trying to hold the end of this thing, I don't find that helpful at all. So, sorry, I just blew on the tip for luck. So what I find is, it, rather than thinking about this one that's holding it and putting it into the thing, I find it easier to concentrate and to think of, I'm holding this steady, and I am using the needle to go on to the thread. And so, generally speaking, it kind of feels its way on, and there you go. This is really, really frustrating when you first do it. So, 
that's just going to happen. So basically what I'm saying is this is about a centimeter I guess and I just let the thread be thread and the needle wants to go on there. It really does. If you're trying to go like this you're just putting pressure into a thing that's not straight. So it's going to go all over but this is straight. So if you just kind of feel, you can feel it and let it kind of like just be like oh wait wait where is it? See? And then it, it just goes on. So once you've done that, when you come to the end, what I want you to do, later on you're going to do different kinds of beading where you're not doubling up the thread, but for this first couple projects, you're using size D thread, it's very, very thin. Now you are going to make a knot. And this is also something that people have different tricks for, and I'm not particularly good at it. So I just tie a plain old granny knot, I guess. So the way to do it is you can take your doubled up. So you've got, if you notice, there's this end. Okay, and I've had students do it where they've tied a knot up here. No, don't do that. Go all the way, pull, and go all the way to the end of this thread. And what you're going to do is you're going to wrap it around these two fingers. It makes it easiest to do this way. Okay, now wrap it around. Now I'm going to open up my fingers and poke through and pull those. So now I'm pulling those through. So I'll show you that one more time. So you waste thread this way, but if you've never tied a knot before, this is sort of the method. So you wrap around, right? You get up there and kind of pinch it. And then you go through here and you grab that thread. It's a bit tricky. You grab that thread and then you pull your knot nearer to the end of your thread. It's okay if you don't get exactly there. Now, let's see, you can see a little bit of a bump, but not much of one. And that's not going to stop anything. You need to knot it at least twice. So again, I'm just quickly, I'm pulling through, so let me show you that. It's slower. So you do the same thing over, you go like this, right? And then you pull it through. Now this is the tricky part, and this is the part I'm not always good at. What you want is to maneuver this knot so that the knot ends up on the exact same spot as the other knot. And that's the part that's kind of like a pain. Beaning teaches you patience. It really does. So now I got a nice big knot here. So the obviously the purpose of that knot is that if I'm bringing it up and you know you're going to start from underneath if I'm bringing it up through something and a pull it's not going to go through and pull through entirely it's going to hang out here and it doesn't really matter if it's kind of ugly here because you're just going to trim it later anyway just go in and trim that tail so that's it that's how to thread the needle um, oh and I should show you how to do thread with the fire line because it's a bit of a trick with a smaller needle. So I'm using a size 16 needle, but the fire line thread, it is a little big for the size 16. And it's a, uh, it's incredibly tough thread. Like I said before, it's kind of like fishing line. So it, when I go to thread this, and you'll notice my 16 needles always curve. They always get bent. Don't worry about it. So it's the same technique that I used before where I'm putting the needle onto the thread, but there's a trick because the circumference of that braided thing, it doesn't want to go in there. Like sometimes it will. I was lucky that time. But if you're having a hard time getting it in there, this is the one time when I do tell you to go on the thread because what you can do is you can kind of like chomp down on the ends of this thread to uh, because it's it's so bonded that you can make it flat. So I'm actually gonna, I'm actually munching down. I'm not gonna show that, but you can see that I kind of flat, like this is frayed now at the end. It's the only time I'll tell you to actually on purpose fray a thread is that it kind of like makes it wider and skinnier. And so if I tilt it the right way, it's a lot easier to get my try and make this so you can see what I'm doing. It's tricky to do this and try and show somebody. It's easier to just do it 
from your own perspective. But you can get it in. Oh, yeah, I did get it in. So you can get it in and then pull it through. It's, oh, it's really hard to do this when I'm not looking through the actual magnifier because I have the magnifier on for you guys. And this is probably why if you have people who sew at home who are older, they probably get you to thread the needle for you. So yeah, so that's how you do that, right? It's super simple. Um, and with fireline thread, you never, you almost never knot it. It's a whole nother, like you don't really double up with this. You don't need to, it's so strong. You just use a single thread, but that's besides the point. So you are using D thread, you are using a size 16 or a size 13 needle from the kit that I gave you or from whatever you bought online. And yeah, happy beading.